But I am fortunate enough to be joined by uh, Tom Schnell. Um, Tom, um, yeah, we won't we won't go back and relive the uh, the what 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 I just did. Let's just put it that way. Oh, I know what's going on here. Sorry, Tom. I'm I am yeah. I'm I've now figured out what is going on. But we'll 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 go to this shot because we can do at least do this. How are you today, sir? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Hey, um, I wanted to talk about the fact that we, uh, well, we, <laughs> the collective we, the government ran out of money, obviously, we knew that uh, was going to happen eventually, and uh, what, I know there was some sort of agreement brewing on, um, uh, let's see, that would have been um, Sunday, do we have something new or do we not? What it, what's what have you heard through the grapevine at this point in time, Tom? So where we are right now, the initial proposal was for around two hundred and fifty billion dollars to basically uh, resupply some of the different programs out there, specifically the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, just looking at the news wire here, Senate passes four hundred and eighty four billion dollars. So it's actually additional you know almost 200 plus billion dollars that they've put in there it's not all going to the paycheck protection program it's going to various different other things also and so the senate passed it by voice my understanding is it goes to the house now who will need to vote on it it from what i'm reading right now it sounds like it's going to be about friday before all of this will happen but we will you know because the house needs to weigh in on it but we will see but right now 484 billion phase, and they're calling it 3.5 as opposed to 4.0, so it's a 3.5. And it talks about uh, a good portion of it will go to the Paycheck Protection Program. It also looks like some of it will go to hospitals, and another 75 billion will go to testing. So not all of it is going to go to financing small businesses, but a, a large portion of it will be going to redo the Paycheck Protection Program. So, and so, oh, go ahead, Tom. Sorry. Oh, I was just, I was just looking at it. More than three hundred billion. So here's, here's where it stands right now today. Uh, this can change, obviously, by the time it goes to the, you know, once the House gets a hold mm -hmm. of it. But right now, in the right. Senate, what they approved was three hundred billion for PPP, and a little over three hundred billion, and sixty billion uh, or so set aside for small. And of that, one of the things that they did put in this one, Matt, is that they are putting about. Six, uh, 60 billion aside for smaller banks and community lenders to focus on the, the smaller and disadvantaged and underserved markets too. So there's going to be a little bit different rollout on this one as far as some of where the money's going to go. But right now we, it looks like about 300 billion. Okay. So that, I mean, i put you on the spot. I mean, the, um, <laughs> um, Obviously, this will be one of those things that kind of uh, does it go to to reef? I mean, that how is this going to be? Do you think if you were to, you know, sort of strategize here, which you have no idea, but right. is it going to be then? So those people that have the loan or have already applied for the loans are going to continue to go through the process, or is it just going to have to go back through the beginning? What do you what do you think may happen? I well, guess. I'm not even going to think on that one because that is a question. One of the first questions I asked when when we found out that they're coming with a 3.5, I got a hold of our con uh, congressional delegates and said, "What, you know, what are some of the parameters?" One of the first questions I asked is if they had already applied but they got declined, or they just ran out of funds before they got their application in. Are they going to have to go back and reapply? And the answer, unanimously, was, "We don't know." <laughs> So that's where we are. They they're aware of it. It sounds like they were going to address it. I don't see anything where it has been specifically addressed. You know, one of the things I'm always concerned about, too, is going off of old information based upon, you know, a new loan program like this. If you would think that it would follow the old program, however, at the same time with new legislation comes new you know, different stuff that they add on or the new requirements. So what I did is, you know, I'm taking from you, Matt, and I, I'm coming up with another word of the day. So I love, I love your word of the day. So I'm going to, I'm going to steal that and I'm going to add on to that. And my word of the day is today is preparedness. Hmm. 
okay. and that is being prepared. And one of the things that I found, I really was, was watching this and talking to a lot of business owners, those that weren't prepared or did not act quickly were the ones that did not get funding or got left out. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying everybody who didn't get funded wasn't prepared. I'm just saying what I noticed on it, if you take a look at the majority of them that didn't get funding is they weren't properly prepared. They didn't act quick enough. And so one of the things that I'm talking about with, with my borrowers at this time is preparedness. And I've jotted down, uh, somebody sent this. I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm kind of plagiarizing this, but I think it's really good. One thing is I would really highly recommend to do is get tied into the SBA web pages, stay current on that. Those things change on a rapid basis. One minute, uh, you think you know how the program works. And the next minute you get an email from somebody saying, sorry, but that's outdated and here's the new information. Mm -hmm. So stay plugged into the SBA websites and follow them for any updates. The other one is, and, and that's number one on my list. There's hey, seven hey. items here that I'm gonna to touch on real quick. Okay, hey Tom, before you get into your list, can I have you do, do me a quick favor? I just noticed your audio has a bad sync with your video. Can you okay. leave the room and then come back and we should, well, that'll, that'll, that'll fix that. So, so drop off. <laughs> yeah, drop off. Let's just, let's just make this okay. better. Okay. <laughs> just like, I want to, I want to, I don't want to see the whole bad, uh, you know, like Japanese movie okay, we'll sort of situation. Really okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's uh, I've noticed that in zoom, just a tri tip trick. Sometimes you have a bad audio sync. Um, and I've discovered that a lot of times if you leave the room and come back in, it seems to work really well. So we'll give Tom a second because I want to make sure that we, uh, as uh, he gives his tips, we have um, good information. And uh, that's, I don't want to have to, um, uh, I want it to look good for you guys too. Um, so hey, here's Tom coming back. We'll, we'll check his audio here in a second. How's this? Oh, it's much better. Thank you, Tom. Delayed, yeah, right? no, nah, that's better. Okay, now, okay, okay so you, you you gave the first one. Now we'll let you get into the second one, I guess. Okay, well, let me let me just go through and and kind of start over. So there's seven points here, as far as staying prepared in this type in this type of environment. And I think really, anytime you run a business like this, I would say preparedness is a is a key critical issue. One of them, you know, the first one is be current, and that is check with the SBA websites for the most recent some guidance and forms. If you filled out an old application, make sure you have the new one. One of the things that we hear about a lot of people who didn't get the funding was that they got on right away. They, they filled out the application and they realized that it was an outdated one and they'd already submitted it. So they had to go back and resubmit it. So make sure you have the the proper guidance and also the current form. So number one is be current. Number two, make sure you're what I call be aligned. And that is clearly know who and how you arrived at your average monthly payroll costs and loan amount. So, you know, make sure that you, you know how you came up with that. Document everything. Mm -hmm. Be able to verify, validate, and document everything that you, you uh, submit. Number three, be thorough. Follow all the uh, steps outlined in the forms and checklists. A lot of times people get impatient. They try to jump ahead. They try to skip something. So make sure that you're thorough with all of the uh, information that you put down and all the boxes that you check and forms you fill out. I would say number four is be yourself. Put the borrower's name on the application as your company's legal name, and it should match the one that is with the Secretary of State. If you don't really know what your legal entity name is go on to the secretary of state's website you can pull it up and make sure that it's listed exactly like you put it on the application number five is be prepared collect all your supporting documents and have them ready when you apply so your tax returns could be a financial statement it may be your payroll any information that you think that they might need utility bills interest costs on your mortgage rent payment have all of that stuff ready and available ahead of time so you're not having to dig through and try to find that stuff or collect it. Have that ready to go. Number six, be consistent. Make sure to provide consistent information on all the documentation. One of the big issues in having done financing before is inconsistencies. If I see an inconsistency, it 
throws that application out and I have to start all over. I'm not mm -hmm. saying they do that with mm -hmm. the SBA. I'm just saying if there's inconsistencies, it can slow down the process and maybe even delay it to the point where you don't get funding. So make sure it's consistent. Number seven, be in touch. You know, and I, I repeat this over and over again. Contact your banker. Talk to them. Make sure that they are part of the Paycheck Protection Program. We heard story after story of I went to my bank to apply and I found out that they weren't part of the Paycheck Protection Program. You should have known that ahead of time. I mean, take the time now to contact your financial institution, find out if they're taking if they're going to be taking applications, find out if they did take applications, if they're looking at taking applications, find out if they're just doing it for borrowers, if they're doing it for borrowers and depositors, and find out if they're doing it for non-customers and find out if they're doing it necessarily in that order. Some of them that we found out only did the, their borrowers and then they opened it up to their non-borrowing relationships and then they finally opened it up to their non-customers. And a lot of the non-customers are the ones that did not get funding. So make sure that you have a source in there. And the other thing is too, is make sure that everything you put on that form that you can verify, validate and document, because if they do come back and ask for it, you wanna be able to show that the information provided was um, accurate. So my word for the day and my, my recommendation is be prepared. This, when it comes out, there's gonna be another rush to get in line to get these funded. Mm -hmm. And so you want to be in front of the line, ready to go, all your information, documentation ready. It makes it a lot easier for the banks. It makes it a lot easier for the SBA to process it. And so my recommendation is be like the Boy Scout and be prepared. Right. So I have a, this is a, I will have to say that this is a personal question. So I'm going to ask my own personal question right now. <laughs> okay. Um, EIDL. Yes. I know there was the first round, the second round, and the third round. Uh, <laughs> if someone, me, uh, applied for an EIDL and has heard nothing, would that be normal? Because are we, I know, I think you had mentioned something about it. It would take like up to two weeks to even get onto a, a, a processor desk. Is that, is that, is that what you're hearing still at this point yeah. in time, Tom? And, and what I would say, I'm not. I'm not sure the right word is rounds. I would say iterations of the application. <laughs> okay, yeah. Really it it's just one <laughs> yeah, that's round. Good, yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's a true. That's they, a, yeah. Yeah, they just came out with an application. Oh, by that way, uh, that application didn't work. So try this application. Right. That one didn't work. So here's, so anyway, I think there's a third iteration what they finally settled on. And normally what I would say is, hey, if you hadn't heard any information, probably, you know, no information is bad information. What we're finding out is kind of the opposite is true. So, there, there is no consistency and I've been talking to people all over and people who applied early on and that were sure they got the loan. They found out Friday or they found out early on that they actually got funded for the, the paycheck protection program. And then all of a sudden on Friday, they got a notice from the SBA that they'd been declined for their EID loan and they were very shocked. So they called the, SBA finally got through and talked to one of the officers and said, what's going on? And they said, well, because you got, a, you know, funding through the Paycheck Protection Program, we declined your loan because well, there's just not enough money to go around. And mm -hmm. so we're trying to spread it around a little bit more. So that's why you're declined. And so it was like, oh, okay, well, I guess that makes sense. Then suddenly we were hearing people that said, well, what's interesting is we got funding from both of them. Hmm. In fact, we just talked to a coworker who has a business who got uh, approval for the PPP loan and got it funded and woke up this morning, checked his checking account, and lo and behold, there was the EIDL loan. So what I would say is if you haven't heard anything, if you got a, a number from the SBA, and you haven't heard anything, just keep checking your checking account because they're not notifying anybody. It's just showing up unannounced. Okay. And it's very, it's very strange. I mean, Matt, I wish I could tell you, yeah, this is what's going on. Or <laughs> if this happened, this happened, but right now it's all over the board. We're hearing people that uh, didn't get money. We're hearing people that got the paycheck protection program, but did not get the EID alone. In fact, they got declined because they got the Paycheck Protection Program. Then we're hearing people that got both of the loans and there is no consistency. So we don't, I wish I had an answer for you, but what I'm gonna say is every morning, wake up and check your 
checking account and see if the money came in. All right, sounds good. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. And then, uh, yeah, I that's just, it is interesting. Oh, and I, I did hear something. I think, um, what was it? Um, 14, was it 14 years of loans in 14 days? Is that what I heard um, from SBC um, or something to that was, analogy? Yeah, the SBA said that SBA, out yeah. is the volume was just, it was, I mean, you look at the sheer volume, if you think about it, I mean, $349 billion in what, a week and a half? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just unheard of. Yeah. I mean, you look at the thousands and thousands and thousands of applications that they had, I mean, this was beyond most banks that I talked to, and I should say banks and credit unions that I talked to actually had to staff up to handle the volume and they're still processing because they have 10 days to fund it once they get the approval. Mm. You know, so they're still, you know, funding the ones that they got the approval on and then really comes out. And I've been getting a lot of questions on this. The banks have been reaching out and going, oh, OK, but wait a second. In eight weeks from now, a lot of these loans are going to be forgiven and the uh, business owners are going to be coming in and asking for forgiveness. What do we do then? And it's like, well, you're going to have another surge of these business owners coming in with their documentation showing that they have, you know, spent the money on payroll and rent and mortgage interest and utilities. And then becomes a process of, of well, I should say, and then it becomes a process of going through all that stuff to documenting that to make sure that they, you know, done it according to what the SBA outlined, but you know, I really don't want to get into that. I think that'd be a good question for a banker to, to answer as far as, you know, how they're handling that. Mm -hmm. The SBA did put out some guidelines. We're hearing that they may clarify some of those guidelines later on this week. And so if that comes out, we'll definitely push that out. But right now there is guidelines on what to follow and how to do it. And once again, I'll go back to that list, make sure that, especially if you got paycheck protection program funding and you're using that money, to pay payroll, mortgage interest, rent, or utilities, uh, do yourself a favor and take very good, what I say, notes and documentation and make sure that you can show where that money went, how it was spent. Um, document, document, document. I can't mm -hmm. say that enough. Be right. prepared. Right. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Tom? I, I think we've covered, I think, the kind of the things I was curious about, but anything else that you want to make sure that we know before I let you go for the day? You know, I think really right now, just, boy, I don't want to you know, repeat the word again, but, but man, it's so important right now to be prepared. Say it anyways, After, Tom. Say it anyways. You know, it's, I, I just, having done this for, I'm not going to say how long because it's going to date me, but <laughs> one of the things that I can say that I've seen that businesses that are successful versus the ones that struggle is preparedness. Mm -hmm. And that is whether that's being prepared financially or in this case here, just being prepared to come in. You know, when I accepted loan application, well, and I still do, when I accept loan applications, those that are prepared tend to get financed at a better, I would say, uh, approval rate just because they have the documentation. I mean, me, to me, you know, I'm not going to go the whole thing through it, but when I do a loan, everything that I do that I ask a borrower for is to verify validate and document the information that I need to, to see if they're, they're you know, if they mm -hmm. qualify for the loan and the same thing is here. So make sure you have this information. If you haven't get your tax returns out, get your financial statements out, get all those records that I talked to you about going forward, making sure that you're keeping those records. I just, I can't stress that enough. And yet I see people who come in and they're just not prepared and then they, they don't understand why they weren't qualified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, great. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I know you're a busy guy. You've got... No, we all are. You know, <laughs> and, and I just appreciate you doing this. Thank you. It's always a pleasure seeing you. You know, I can't wait to... We're out in the public again and actually uh, see each other face-to-face. Uh, -face. This uh, telecommuting is, is fun for the first week and then it's getting kind of old. Yeah. No. Are you joining us uh, Thursday for our virtual pub talk? Pub talk, absolutely. I, I can't wait to do it. Uh, actually, it was kind of funny. I was thinking of that exact thing when I said I can't wait to see you face to face. Love seeing you at Pub Talk. I miss all my uh, peeps there. Miss all the people from Edco there and all the uh, entrepreneurs and investors. 
So absolutely, I'm going to uh, get my popcorn and uh, Pepsi and sit on the couch and uh, watch you do your magic. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you all for joining us on another edition of Show Up Central Oregon. We'll be back uh, tomorrow at 3.30 with Sherry Helt. Uh, so it's going to be another great day. And hey, remember, everything you do, show up Central Oregon.